And here's the thing. People are scared, no doubt. Uh, people are afraid, no doubt. Overwhelmed, drunk on information, don't know who to trust. I get it. But there's one person who's the expert. There's one person who knows it all. There's one person who has the, the template for what you need, and it's you. And as soon as we go, you will be so obsessed with living this vibrant life, it won't even freaking matter what mRNA blah, blah, blah. It won't matter what Bill Gates is doing. It won't matter what's going on out there. You won't have any room for it. Welcome to the Drew Perlman Show. Think of this podcast as the antidote to the fear, the noise, and the talking heads in the news. The show features an entertaining blend of ancient wisdom, empowering ideas, and cutting edge, healthy living science to optimize your health and your life. All right, so we're going to dive in and get started here with, with Dr. Tommy John. Uh, Tommy got his master's degrees in health and exercise science from Furman University. He was also a college and professional baseball player and later became a chiropractor. Uh, Tommy's also the author of the book, Minimize Injury, Maximize Performance, a sports parent survival guide. Welcome, Tommy, to the show. I appreciate it, man. Thanks for having me. Oh, it is a huge honor. It is a huge honor. Um, so, Tommy, I was showing you at the beginning, you got me inspired to read this book by David White, and I've been reading it all, all week. So yes. I figure maybe somewhere in the conversation, we can throw a few lines. Dude, always, always. So powerful. Uh, it, it's interesting because a friend of mine who, um, I don't know if you're familiar with the Kripalu Institute in Massachusetts, like, no. it's, it's a wellness center and they do yoga and all kinds of things. And uh, I have a friend of mine who teaches, she does workshops there. And years ago, she said, you know, she said, I've, I've been doing all these workshops, a lot of high profile people come through, but she's like, there's this guy, David White, this poet, you've got to hear this guy. He is like riveting. No way. And, um, and then I hadn't heard about him until you mentioned this book. Um, how did you oh, come wow. across this? How did you come across this book, by the way? Dude, dude. So the way I kind of do things is if something gets my attention like two or three times, I strike. Right. And so I like Dr. Uh, Dr. Cassie Huckabee, who's my naturopath, who's one of the only naturopaths I trust actually. Um, and for various reasons, but she had been saying she's reading it and I'm like, Oh, that's interesting. I used to be into poetry. I used to write poetry in high school. I love the arts. Okay. Like what, is, what is it about you? She's like, well, when you read it, I, I get out of my head. I don't like reading like stuff about medicine and herbs and all this other stuff. You, you can feel the reading instead of like analyzing the reading. Right. And then days later, Dr. Christian Northrup, who's a friend of mine and just a powerhouse Titan of a spiritual goddess, like just an absolute spiritual ninja. She mentioned it. And I'm like, okay, I'm getting this friggin' book. So then I get it and I'm like, Oh my gosh, this thing is unreal. And then I randomly, I've been talking about it, talking about it and talking about it. A woman who lives down the road from David says, she's like, you should get him on your podcast. I'm like, oh my God, I'd give anything to just chat with him. Cause he wrote essentials in 2020. Wow. And so I, I literally, she talked to him. She got his assistant's email. I emailed him, explained who we were. I wanted Dr. Cassie to interview him as well. And uh, he's like, he's flattered. I'll pass along the message, but he's slammed right now, but maybe in the near future. So oh, it's cool. this whole weird circle of events that, uh, it's oh, no yeah. longer weird, actually. Yeah. Uh, well, it's so great. I'm glad you recommended. I know my son happened to see the cover. I have a 13 year old son. He happened to see the cover and he was like drawn to it. Yeah. And he read the first page of it and he's like, this is the best poem I've ever, best poem he's ever read. So he was, he yeah. was kind of, he wants to read it as well. So it's, Huge. you know, hey. It's so awesome. I say it's so needed, you know, like if you just quiet down and go into it and feel, feel for like 10 minutes, yeah. that, that would change the globe. Like, like just totally. that alone, you know, totally, totally. And that, that is so, so true, you know, um, and, and that's something that just made me, uh, that, that really resonated to me about your work is just how you've talked about how, you know, when you, when someone comes to see you, I mean, you, it, it seems like you really make your clients, the people that work with you really accountable and, you know, you, this, the, the whole mantra that you have, you heal you. Um, but I know you've said that you have to be able to feel, and, and it does seem Tommy, like people just don't want to feel. And I, how do you get past that when you're working with someone? Like, what do you do? 
So they've been like programmed, right? I mean, everything around them is to program them that they're not enough, that their bodies are enemies, their feelings are disease, that everything that's going on around them needs to be manipulated, controlled, coerced, owned, that they're ugly, that they're of no value unless they're buying and selling. And it's just so when it comes with illness or of whatever the expression is, I don't even say sickness or disease exists because it's just the body trying to heal itself. They called it sickness and disease. It's just healing. It's like Seaver's disease and Ashka Slaughter's disease. Oh, you mean growth? But they coined it with like disease. It's like, wait a second. Now there's like menstrual disease, like all these things. You mean the beautiful cycle that a woman gets to go through like every month? Like what? So we just outsourced everything for so long that now when they come in and they love listing the things that they do, the professionals they've hired, all the people that have been involved in their path. Now, mind you, I didn't go get them out of their house and force them into my office. And I didn't run a special. They came in because they wanted to come in because stuff's not necessarily ideal. So I have to get them to admit that everything they've been doing hasn't been working. And that's very hard for them because they, they're so attached to it and they're attached to the people and they're attached to the labels that they get. And the labels, we just got to stop because once you're your label, you're never going to heal ever because you literally are identifying with this thing that's not even true. It's not even a real thing. It's all a lie. So I need them to admit that. And a lot of people are real hard. That's the first day. Because everything I say, if you if you can't let go of that old program, that old story, everything we're about to do, it's gonna it's gonna be for nothing, and it's gonna be the opposite of everything. If I just had a brain, like a basic critically thinking brain, and I listened to what people talked about that didn't work, and I just did the opposite, it should work. <laughs> and that's what I've been doing for twenty years. Literally, I don't go to like all these extra education class, all this other stuff, because you just get so pulled away from what people need with all these systems and gimmicks and tricks that you learn in a weekend. I'm like, no, man. And so literally it's trying to get the people to leave the program that brought them to this place in the first place and then rewrite the program. And when they do, it's not, we hope you'll heal. It's you will heal. It, it's not anything hoping anything. This is just default. This is just how we are. And part of that, whether it's there's an emotional construct to everything, soft tissue injuries like my specialty, right? So anything kind of with the physical body, but we've got a spiritual, intellectual, mental, and emotional with injuries. You roll your ankle, a limp pattern immediately happens. Your brain remembers what it was like, the action you did, the environment, your feeling, your thought. And if it ever gets close to going there again, it'll freak out and throw you into lockdown. So we have to like create a scenario that's greater than what injured you in the first place and to trigger healing the tissue damage has to go to the brain and say hey this hurts like hell and the brain will go got it i'm going to heal you like hell <laughs> mm -hmm. but if we never are allowed to feel because we ice it we drug it we oil it we take all this stuff or we're told it's a label then all of a sudden brain's like i'm not really sure what i'm feeling i'm trying to trigger this but chemically i'm being induced into this state and I don't feel really confident and I'm being told that I'm attacking myself and I'm, <laughs> and it's like nature never loses. She never, she settles the score. And so again, if you do the trickery in the beginning to kind of not feel at some point down the road, you are going to have to stand toe to toe with yourself. You might as well do it while the shit's fresh, <laughs> you know? So, I mean, if you're going through some stuff, let's go fresh right now. You go hard. You're going to bottom out. But your body's designed for every trauma to have a healing force greater than that. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. So think about traumas now as opportunities, literally. And I'm not, it's not me spinning it into this positive affirmation dork. Like, literally, it's just, wait, oh, my gosh, what, what are you learning right now? What's, what is that going to teach you? And if we do the work, damn, you, oh, my God, what an opportunity. Let's go. And I'll do that for soft tissue stuff or the death of my brother, or the trauma of 2020, whatever you want to call it.
Mm. That's what I was just going to ask you, because it's amazing you use the word opportunity, like like what's this collective trauma that's going on right now. But but people are like, you know, you talk to people and they're like, man, I just want to get to 2021. But I mean, but I mean, you you see this as a really as an opportunity. I mean, I didn't think things were so great, Tommy, to be quite honest, before 2020. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. Did, did we, we did we kind of need some kind of a so, massive so, wake no, up you call? hit it man and, and this is not many people want to admit this and every time i get a chance to take the stage i drop this bomb on people we thought we were amazing march 12 2020 having been <laughs> in this field having been in this field for 20 years and me just observing how people connect what they believe in who they are their nourishment physical competency, neurological adaptation, overstimulated, overeducated, overprofessional, over everything. We were the worst I've ever seen in 20 years, meaning we had a steady decline, but we think we're just God's gift to the planet because we can download apps at the speed of light because we can, you know, run a business from our phones. And it's like, okay, wait, 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 wait. I didn't know it was going to come in this form, but I thought there was going to be a reckoning. I really, truly, my buddies and I were theorizing and fantasizing that it was going to be an alien invasion. The earth was going to open up, swallow, you know, a bunch of people. Something had to happen because we couldn't continue on this path. Like we were seeing it and and just we weren't okay with it. You know what I mean? It wasn't like, oh, yeah, we got more business because people are just, no, no, no. We, We truly care. You know, like this is like a passion for us. It's not work. And so when we saw it, we're just like, we can't keep going like this. Like we're doing our part, but what the hell? So then when this happened, it's like, aha, I didn't know immediately that this was going to, going to, this was what it was going to be. But I was like, okay, as we progress, oh, this is it. Tom Cowan, Christian Northrup, Dr. Tom Cowan, Dr. Christian Northrup working 40 plus years. They've been saying the same thing for 40 years. Nobody's listened to them. I've been saying it for 20 piddly years. Somebody else for 10, somebody for three. Now you have to do it all in one shot, what we've been talking about over decades. So it's kind of unfair, but we're all in it. So let's just do it. And we're equipped to do it because as long as you woke up this morning, oh, you're here, you're good. And so here's the thing, everything from school to law, to politics, to spirituality, to media, to tech, to agriculture, to you name it, medicine, the whole thing has to crumble and start or either go another route and just reinvent from the ground up a whole new system because that system got us to be able to March 12, 2020, which I don't care what you think this is. The reason we're where we are was because of who we were March 12, 2020. (laughs) So we got to start. It's not going to be a, can we do a cleanse for a virus? Or if people think viruses, that's not, no, (laughs) uh, (laughs) Should I just start farming? I mean, possibly, you know, okay. Homeschool. Yeah, that's a thing. You know, uh, like stop watching the news. Step one. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's like everything, like every aspect of your life, you have to take an inventory right now and you have to try to look at it and be like, I have to change all this. Yes. Little (laughs) bits every single day, but I promise you, you will be infinitely better than you were March 12th, 2020. And as a collective, that's the group that's going to raise. And that's that's where I think this is such a huge opportunity for the globe to elevate back to this ascension of civilization instead of, you know, it's demo- it's de-evolution, which is what I was I was noticing, you know, which was alarmingly scary. Now people mm-hmm. are like, oh, you're scared now? No. March 12, 2020, I was pretty terrified. Like uh, of the state of the world or the state of people. And now it's like, wait. But the curtain's been pulled back on a lot of stuff. Mm. This is cool. What a great opportunity. You had time with your family during a lockdown that you chose to participate in. You had time to assess passion and purpose. You had time to maybe see if that's the income you want to go. You and your wife got stronger. You and your wife divorced. What a blessing. Do you know what I mean? Like all these things moving forward, there's so much healing going on right now. And healing doesn't feel good. Healing is bloody. Healing is swelling and pain. Healing is pimples and warts and cancer. Healing, that's healing. Yeah. Your body doesn't, just because it doesn't make sense to you, it doesn't feel good. My God, this is the opportunity. So that's where I'm at. I love it. 
I love it. I mean, it, it is. I mean, because there there are days where it does uh, it does get overwhelming, and I mean, you yes. just just getting consumed in the social media and all this all this stuff. I mean, but um, but you've also said I've heard you say, Tommy, that 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 it requires a massive amount of work, yeah. um, and, and a lot of work. I mean, what is that to you? To you, what does that work just involve? Like to to the anybody listening right now who's feeling maybe a bit overwhelmed you know yeah you know what's uh what's like what are those baby steps for someone like to yeah. get you know they want to make a change but they're just like you know so much going on right now so this is cool um we actually talked about it. i did a podcast earlier today and he asked the same thing so i i whittle it down to these things i call the eight essentials and it, it just happens to line up with david white like the name of his book but i <laughs> Pulled it from Dispenza's work, Bruce Lipton's work, you know, um, Kelly Brogan, like all these people doing these miraculous, well, these healing stories. And they all mention all these things that people who heal have in common. And then any 90 plus year old, I would pick their brain on, and, you know, because they're driving themselves, making their own food, they're coherent, they're, they're really not fitting what the model is for being a 90 year old, which is like in a bed, like hooked up to stuff. They're actually like living and thriving. What's the secret? And it came down to these eight. And I was like, okay, if we take an inventory of these eight and we whittle them all together with a reason, like an intention, here's where we go. So let's just talk about the eight and then I'll tell, I'll share. So the first one, a belief in something greater than yourself. Number two, purpose. Number three, relationships. Number four, uh, sleep, uh, naps. Number five, breath, meditation, prayer. Number six, outdoor exposure. Number seven, nourishment. Number eight, movement. Now, all of them are like, they're linearly written, but they're like folded up on each other where they're all connected in like quantum style. You know what I mean? And so here's the thing. What you do is you take a definition and it's not to be judged by anybody else. This is your list. This is your like fingerprint for life. You take this list, you write out, what is your belief in something greater than yourself? What does it mean to you? Write it. Go into that. Some people don't even think that way or feel that way, right? Just go in. Purpose. What is your reason for being here? Small, medium, large. Small being, I just wanted to get out of bed this morning. That was my purpose. Make breakfast without swearing at my wife. Hey, cool. That's a purpose. Uh, a raise or something, or I want to relocate my family to Arizona. Boom. That's a long distance one. Great. There's your reason. Um, three relationships, the people that support your belief in something greater and your purpose. And then the others that put it to you, that really challenge you to be better, hold you, you know, up, up against the, the fire, right? All the other ones, the energy vampires, you leave them, you cut them, you purge them. They're gone. Number four, you know, sleep and naps before 11 without tech, take mini naps, seven to 19 minutes a day. But again, you just write your own. Breath, meditation, prayer, whatever that means to you. Outdoor exposure, whatever that means to you. Nourishment, sunshine, air, thoughts, what you see, what you hear. That's all nourishment as well as food from the source, the trusted source, hopefully small farmers. Um, and getting back to the, the intimacy of our food again. And then movement, body movement. Simple as getting outside, walking, uh, moving every joint the number of times you are a day years old. And then if a joint's affected, two to 300 times, just some basic. Then you split each of those eight into two categories, medicine, toxic, and you be honest, uh, pick food because it's just an easy one. Um, medicinal foods I eat throughout the day, like things, you know, and don't, don't be like research them is this because truthfully, when I eat pizza, it's medicine because I celebrate freaking pizza. <laughs> Like I am like hoisting it like, oh my God, this is amazing. It's not me like in shame eating it because I had this really clean week. No, what are you talking about? I had a clean year. Like eat food. There's no more good foods, bad foods. It's just your emotional state tied to it, what you're doing with it. Um, but you go in like, ah, I had a bag of Cheetos with the family because we were having a contest. Okay. You know, you, you just start to look at toxic medicine. And you start to move some of those toxics over to the other side, or you start to eliminate them in small steps, small steps with an inventory every single day. You can't do it all in one day. That's not sustainable. And this has to be when you're 99 years old or nine years old. It's the same formula. It doesn't change because you're old or because you're left-handed or right politically this or young or married or not. Dude, healing is healing. The body is the body. There's only one path, the way. There's no more like these splits. Are you allopathic or holistic? 
what are you talking about? It's medicine. <laughs> like, well, how do we have a division? Uh, like organic or GMO? No, it's food. Like, that's it. There's no, we've split it because we've had niches. We've had businesses. We have had all this stuff. So now here's where it comes in. You said it's work and it is because we have to get a stimulus into the body greater than the trauma so that the body knows to adapt and level up. So somebody asked me, this gentleman asked me on an earlier podcast, talk about self-discipline. Well, those eight, what they have in common, I've had a, many people look at those eight. I got them in my office. There's posters for sale. They'll put them in their dorm rooms, put in their offices, put them in there, and they'll check the box. It's a check the box society. <laughs> I'm going to check the box to being an expert. I'm going to check the box to becoming happy. I'm going to check the box to becoming a millionaire. I'm going to check the box to be healthy. It's like, no, oh, damn it. There's no formula. This is like the anti-system system, anti-formula formula. Every day is different. That's why I don't take notes in my office. Because Nick here was not who he was yesterday. <laughs> so what do my notes from yesterday have anything to do with today? They don't. Do you re-eval every day? Every time I see the person, it's a re-evaluation. They're a total different person. Same with me. So when we tie in those eight with a reason, your intention, your why. And my why, what is it? It's to be the most resilient, connected, strongest, hopeful, empowered human I, I could possibly be who's going to enjoy this entire experience called life at the greatest level that I can. And every day I'm better than I was yesterday in some fraction of an aspect. That ties in those eight. So when I approach those eight, is it work? No, it's just what's needed for my reason. So there's no choice. That's why everyone's like, it must be exhausting living like you. <laughs> it's so amazing living like me. I don't think twice. I don't expend mental effort on anything <laughs> because it's just, it, it's just clear. I'm just there. And now if somebody comes along, hey, I want to hang out with you. Nope. Why? Uh, I don't have a good feeling with you. <laughs> like, it's just clear. Uh, what do you want to, you want to eat at that restaurant? No, I'm not not feeling it. I want to make my food and sit down. Oh, you want to go? I mean, it's, it's just such, Oh, what if they want to do a vaccination or what if they close your bit? No. What are you talking about? This doesn't make any sense. And here's the thing. People are scared. No doubt. Uh, people are afraid. No doubt. Overwhelmed, drunk on information. Don't know who to trust. I get it. But there's one person who's the expert. There's one person who knows it all. There's one person who has the, the template for what you need. And it's you. And as soon as we go, you will be so obsessed with living this vibrant life, it won't even freaking matter what mRNA, blah, blah, blah. It won't matter what Bill Gates is doing. It won't matter what's going on out there. You won't have any room for it. That's why somebody's like, uh, have you seen this video? And I was like, no, I'm too busy sunning my balls. <laughs> like, I'm literally like being serious. I'm out in the sun. I'm so obsessed with this experience that you could not even enter my consciousness. I'm just aware that there's some really gnarly stuff. What does that have to do with me? It doesn't matter. So here's the thing. And if you start to be so obsessed with that, doubt, fear, don't enter. Because everyone's like, how are you not afraid? Because I'm so obsessed with living high. I feel doubt and fear. Yeah, hell yeah. But it doesn't stay and poison me and make me adapt to that, which it will. It'll bring me down to fetal. Because I'll allow it to be so overwhelming that that's it. And I'm going to survive that. Wait, 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 wait. Doubt and fear are amazing, amazing feelings. They're amazing teachers. I feel them daily. I feel despair daily, anger daily, jealousy daily, like all these things daily. But they come in. I do the work, acknowledge. Hmm, all right. Well, counter that is anxiety is like inaction. So I'll just go take action towards something. All right. You know what? Here's a cat outside my house. I'm going to cuddle the hell out of that cat <laughs> and i'm just gonna like download things from him. like what's up dude like just talk to him like whatever or i'm going to eat the hell out of this salad and i'm gonna enjoy every single bite of it why because i just made a bomb ass salad from a grocery store in my home at the beach like there's just so much that we could be obsessed with that's so good there's no room for the doubt or fear to exist and that's the great place to be um oh, no. Because it makes choices and those decisions that even if you're a husband, wife, father, teacher, what it makes your decisions very simple. They're never easy. We don't want easy. The body devolves with easy, mm. but we want clear. We want 
ah, you know, Alex Zek asked me, Alec and Ali Zek, yo, TJ, you want to start a nonprofit? Done. Asked me two years ago. No, like I'm too selfish with my time. I don't want this. I don't want to take this on. I want to go at the beach and do my office and do this. But with all this stuff, health, freedom for humanity, nonprofit. Oh, hell yes. How are you so clear? Because I've done all the work prior to that. The, the, the choices are just like green, 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 green. And then, you know, am I supposed to move my family? I'm terrified. You will know when you live in this authenticity and consistent, when you live that way, it's just this, they call them synchronicities or cosmic winks or whatever. It's just, that's it. Yeah. Go. That's so cool. That's so cool. You know, Tommy, it, it made me think of something from, uh, okay, I got the book here again, David White's book. Let's do it. Um, so he said, talking about just, I love how you, you, you just embrace everything. And he says, talking about our flaws and our vulnerabilities and all this stuff. Oh, yeah. He, yeah, yeah, yeah. he said, I'm just going to read it to you and just see where you, what you take from it. He said, our faces would fall away until we, growing younger toward death, every day would gather our, all our flaws in celebration to merge with them perfectly, impossibly wedded to our essence, full of silence from the carver's hand. And and just that whole notion of just, I mean, gathering our flaws in celebration. I mean, I just love how you, you are just embracing everything. Like you said, the dark, the light, the good, the bad. I mean, that's, that is incredibly powerful to me. All of it, man. And I appreciate you saying that. I, I, it's literally like, gray hair, laugh wrinkles, stretch marks, a, you know, a scar. I mean, we've been told that these things are, are ugly or something's wrong with us or even a tumor or cancer or acne. You're not flawed. You're never flawed. The system's not born flawed ever. There's always this intelligence behind it. But we've, we've been sold that there's always something wrong with us, that if we started to embrace that stuff, we become very comfortable with self and we, you're very dangerous um, to somebody who maybe is trying to control people. Like if you try to manipulate the person who has very much this autonomous, sovereign nature with self, who knows self, you can't check those people. That's why I'll, I'll do it sometimes just to screw with people who come in and they're like dead set on this, 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 and I'll just check them with a couple questions and they get like so defensive right away. I'm like, that was kind of easy. Like I didn't even really try, but if they tried to do it to me, it'd be like, what? Like some people try to catch me in lies thinking I'm living this double life. They'll be like, Oh, so you like, no, how I am with you right now is how I am with Nick right here is how I am with people at home is how I am. It's just this one straight across because who cares who's better than anybody. I said this at the last heart of freedom rally. I did this fake neurological experiment. I turned everybody into uh clapping seals they didn't know their eyes one eye was shut their toes were touching and they were doing this and if they were right eyed they had to make an o sound if they were left eyed they'd make an ah sound they go oh 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 and they were supposed to see an image i mean i totally made up the whole thing there's 1400 people and so I, i'm literally like okay so this experiment was bullshit and everyone's like oh my god i'm like but here's the thing me who has these two ridiculous letters before his name that mean absolutely nothing. I'm standing on a stage above you with a microphone and I turned you into a trained seal. Easily. Like, don't let a scientist, a doctor, a media owner, nobody's above anybody. The letters after the name, the, the profession, the knowledge, the books, the degrees, the no, those are done. Those labels and hierarchies are gone. We have one thing in common and we're human beings. Do not let anybody turn you into a trained seal and force you into that. You are 100% human, flawed to perfection. It's not even flaws, right? It's just like what, it's just human. I mean, it's so amazing and it's so old school, man. And Northrop has said this, um, people reading Native American type stuff, like they embraced those things. Uh, 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 now, like, and I get, I take the menstrual cycle. I'm just kind of on this kick because it's, oh, what a nuisance. And oh, how disgusting for that female. And oh, it's painful. And we're not like honoring what she's feeling. Where in like Native American cultures, they put them in a special teepee and brought them gifts. 
and like showered them with love and tried to learn from them because of this moment that they were going through where the house for an egg was being sloughed off and they were feeling that and the body was renewing and it was in sync with the moon. It was like, holy crap. But here it's something's wrong with that woman. And let's quiet it down and get her back out and get her back in society and get her working again or playing again or doing stuff. And, oh, be ashamed of it as well. That's why I said naked and ready for war. A couple of meetings behind that naked, but out. And I, somebody had a problem with me naked and swearing. So I came up with that post yesterday. I'm like, FYI, if you have a problem with me being naked or swearing, unfollow because more is coming. <laughs> like, I, I mean, I'm bringing it hard. And that's why it's like naked, just shedding the... Just get rid of what they told you were supposed to be and let's let's just reframe it. You're not sick. You're not diseased. You're not flawed. You're not fighting yourself. You're not attacking yourself. You're this beautiful, beautiful composite of everything that's in and around you and on you. And we're all tied together. We all have a point, a reason. We're supposed to be here, connected to sun, connected to pelicans, connected to cats, connected to earth, connected to food, everything we've got going on. We just have to bring back that connect. And dude, that's where the David White, I read it at the Heart of Freedom rally, the intro, the last paragraph to the intro. He wrote it in 2020 and is literally going back out and connecting with sky and moon and nature and self. And I mean, I was like, he's, he's dialed in. So he's amazing. Totally. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. I mean, so, so nature, mother nature, I mean, what, what, what does it mean to you? I mean, just being able to, to embrace it all. Like what, what, what is it, uh, what does it do for you? Mean to you? All, all of that. It's one of those things I told it on a podcast today. I get goosebumps right now. I got goosebumps right now. And this is happening more and more. Um, I was rooted in the ocean. Like I, I bored my feet down. Right. And I'm staring at the sunset. And all of a sudden, I mean, it was so clear and it was like a finger off the horizon. And I'm doing my breathing and I'm just trying to take in the sun and I'm just, just really being. And all of a sudden I start weeping and not because of my brother or an ex-girlfriend. Like literally, I was just like overwhelmed with this feeling. Well, not overwhelmed, just, just stimulated with this feeling that I was tiny like this thing was so huge. What I'm standing in is so huge. What I'm a part of is so huge that I'm this little speck, this little fleck of nothing. And I was very grateful to even be a part that, that is even keeping me here. Like I was just like, I'm so like grateful for this. But then what quickly turns, so I'm crying. And then what quickly turned is that bigness if we go inside and we go small enough within us, there's like another sunset inside us. So it's like we have that power and that rhythm and those cycles are inside ourselves and inside our bodies and inside our light beings that we're as big as that, as small as that. Do you know what I mean? It's like this mm. loop where we we coincide with it as a, there's a bigness to us and then there's a small and it's it's all of it. I did it at, uh, I was at Big Sur. I don't know if you know where that is. Um, it's just north yep. of me on the one. And uh, I was driving the coast and I was like looking and I was watching the ocean run up on the shore, hitting the rock. I mean, like pounding the rocks. And then there were like buffalo or cows in the grass. And then there were grass going over the rocks. And then if you go a little further in, there's this huge forest. And then there's like, you know, mushrooms in the forest. And then there's birds and there's the sun baking it. And I was like, looking at all this and I'm like, damn, this is, if we went inside our bodies, the ocean would be these like, this like liquid, like immune response. And the cows are a cell in here and the grass is a cell or is the microbiome or biome or path, like whatever it is, like parasites we make, what a beautiful thing. Like everything has its, its like reason. And everything has their order. And I'm looking at this and I'm like, this is literally what's going on inside me right now. I just can't see it, but I'm looking at it. I'm, I, we get to look inside ourselves by seeing the earth and what it does. Do you know what I mean? Like it has an immune response. We call them tsunamis and volcanoes or, or heat waves or cold waves. Does the human ever do that? Oh, hell yeah. Does the human vomit? Does the human have fever? Does the human shiver? Does the human like... Dude, it's the same thing. It's just healing itself. We think we're going to like hurt it. 
she has been here so much longer than us. Yeah. If we stop trying to control it and fight it and manipulate it, we just connect and see our role. You know, the powers that be want to manipulate and control it and beat it. But if we just see our role, it takes it. The gratitude's kind of easy to find. It's very easy to, to sort of, I know it, I'm not besides routine, but it, it becomes one of those things where it's, we can't disconnect self from nature. And we've tried to do that. There is so much medicine in the sun, herbs, dirt, electromagnetism of the, of the ocean. Like, like there's so much medicine there that it's literally one of those things we don't need, even just as much as connecting with fruit. Fruit has evolved. I got this from Sarah G. I'm, I'm big to give credit to people because I, I have invented nothing. But Sarah G was talking in his book, Regenerate. Um, Fruit has evolved in order to continue its its seed, like its kind, its genus. It it created this colorful, sweet, um, attractive skin, so that an animal or a human would consume it. And the pay, the the thank you to you is nourishment, because you're taking the seeds and going to go put them somewhere else, and that plant is going to continue. So all of a sudden now. When we connect with our food that way, and it's like a, hey, thank you. Damn, wait, that's the bigness that we're, yeah, like it's giving you nourishment and medicine for you to continue the species. And we do the same. We should do the same. There's the, there's the relationship, man. Like, my God, like, I don't know how you don't feel so amazing when you think of things that way, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I love how you said once, I mean, you, you know, you said once, I, I, I believe, um, well, I, I, you, you said it, that something like, uh, you know, the, the system doesn't want us to be strong. It doesn't want us to be yes. nourished. It doesn't want us to be connected and empowered. Yeah. Um, so you really have to kind of go, would you say go against the grain a little bit to, I mean, to, to really, to feel all that, to feel that gratitude every day. I mean, it's amazing. Um, but it it does seem like we are kind of beaten down a lot and that it's really, um, it's really going against the grain to, to, to feel that. That that's, that's a good point. Here's the thing. So 20 years of practice, the most profound things I've learned was doing the opposite of what doesn't work. And so right now, every single one of those eight essentials is getting attacked. We're putting up our belief into a godlike white coat or or the religion of a shot and outsourcing power of human. Okay. Our purpose. Businesses are being closed. Um, you know, and that might have been someone's mom and pop store. Okay, relationships totally being checked. That's why I call it social distancing, not physical distancing, right? Like they don't want you social. Sleep and naps, yeah. You're not sleeping when you're terrified and you're listening. To the, I mean, they checked every single one. We can shop at Walmart, but I can't get garden seeds, tomato seeds. Wait, this is crazy. There's your nourishment. Like, okay. So if you just did the opposite of what was asked of you right now, like what's being, okay, social distance. Nah, I'm going to connect with as many people as I can. Cover your mouth. No, I'm going to open up. Stay inside. No, I'm going to go outdoors. I mean, like literally you do the opposite to the best that you can to the comfort level that you're at. And then what happens when you start tying all that together, what the over your, cause I was like, what about courage? Like it just shows like everyone's like, Oh, you're sacred masculine. Or you're so courageous. I'm not anything. I'm just literally the, the strongest expression of those eight I can be, people will label you with all the positive words. Okay. Like I didn't wake up and go, I'm going to be sacred masculine today. And I'm going to make a video on sacred masculine. No, I I honestly don't even know what that means. But everyone's like, you're the epitome. Like, but I don't know what that means. Stop labeling me. I'm just a human. Like done. I'm just trying to be the best human I can be who happens to be a man who's going to do certain things. Call it courageous. Call it. If everyone just kind of, went to those eight, figured out self, expressed it to the best. Then all of a sudden you have the elements of resiliency, grit, strength, courage. And then it doesn't matter what they try to pull or what's coming down the line. Cause nobody can predict what's happening tomorrow, a month, a year, three years. We don't, we have all these scary videos and all these scary news, but we don't have any idea. So what do you know? You know, self, you know that you've got you right now. Okay. Then focus on you. Go, go. And then all of a sudden, 
when presented with those challenges, the thing of it is our threshold of stimulus, like our body has a certain threshold that we get hit with stimuli, whether it's uh, interpretation of traffic, um, sound, uh, physical, emotional, like it doesn't matter if it hits that and breaks it, the body has to give and pull from somewhere to survive that environment. But you can raise that level up. So now all of a sudden traffic, you used to bite your wife's head off when you got home after sitting in traffic. And it was like, bah! because traffic pushed that threshold. And then she goes, hey, honey, are you hungry? Jesus. And you just like dumped on her. And it was like, oh, my God. Now all of a sudden you raise that threshold with the work you do. Traffic's down here. Look at all this space you have for all this other stuff. Like whatever, whatever it's going to be for you. And then all of a sudden, <gasps> bad news via, you know, whatever the news is coming down oh, and you'll just sit there calmly and you can make a calm decision and be like, Hmm, this doesn't make any sense. I don't like this because it doesn't make sense to how I live. Are you going to take the, vet? it doesn't make sense to me. Did you do the research? It doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> like, I don't need to know what else I need to tell you other than I don't need to know all the data and the science because most of it's made up anyway. And it doesn't apply to me because I'm not a data point and neither are you. You can't measure the human being in a data point because you're changing every second of every day. So that's just, I'm telling you, that's such a great place to be that if we focused on that, but instead people are waiting for the nonprofits to run a protest or waiting for someone to go, go, you know, rally or do something, or it's not happening. That is not the reality we live in. Nobody's going to save anybody. We have to go into ourselves and go do the work ourselves. And when we do, if you want to protest, you want to rally, go, hell yeah, go stand for something. Great. But you are going to have to create this reality on your own. That's going to be very uncomfortable for people. But there's millions of us doing it. And we're all starting to find each other. You know, again, rather than just living next to one another and just going through the motions like, oh, you're there. Yeah. Another human. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. All right, Tom, I got to read you one other thing from the uh, the book here. Do it. Um, so this is called, uh, because it just made me think of what you were saying. So this is from Sweet Darkness. Oh, I love this one. Dude, love it. Okay, I'm just, I just want to read you the end and just, just tell me what, what comes to mind here. So you must learn one thing the world was made to be free in. Give up all the other worlds except the one to which you belong. Sometimes it takes darkness and the sweet confinement of your aloneness to learn anything or anyone that does not bring you alive is too small for you. Isn't that great? Dude, I, I've quoted that. I've like talked about it. That's my favorite. That's one of my favorite lines, obviously, that I, that I would like resonate with, oh, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, it's exactly what we've been talking about. Like right, seeing, right. And again, understand that David White wrote this in 2020. Like he, he was experiencing everything else everybody was experiencing. He wrote this in a response to that. So we're born with this, this natural freedom, right? This bodily sovereignty, bodily autonomy. You have every control, every right to control everything that you do for your health and medical freedom, whatever that means to you. And that is what, if somebody was like, tell us what it's, how important is health freedom? It's, it's everything it is to be a human. If we lose health freedom, we, we aren't human anymore. So sit with that reality. That's the darkness. Sit with it. It's such a great, great place to see the stars. Or it's a great thing to feel and see what you're supposed to. Oh, my God. Let it out. Do not be afraid of your feelings. Don't be ashamed of anything. Don't connect if you need to. Reach out. Journal. Feel. Express. Human. 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 Everything you're going through is human. And then you'll start to see, okay, Here's what I got. I'm going to take action. I'm going to go here. And that's where he said, anybody that checks it, that now I've gotten so, I'm almost like the ultimate snob <laughs> because someone will be like, you know, hey, I want you to get on my, my portal where I've got health practitioners. And I'm like, no, I don't feel good. Like, I just don't. Now I almost have this like mother's intuition kind of thing that I like step back because the last year I've been doing massive work and I'm like, no, no, it's not. You're going to steal my joy. You're not going to be an expression. I got no time for you. And it's because I'm so selfish with my being and selfish with my time. Cause it's a gift, man. 
Like I will not spend two hours with someone who's not benefiting or something that's not benefiting my aid and improving me to be better tomorrow. I'm not going through the motions anymore. That's what got us here. No, 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 no more of that. We're, we're too, we're too big for that. The human bigness. And so I, David White speaks it. Everyone's got their version. If you want inspiration, get the David White essentials and read sweet darkness, man. Cause that's, that ending is, is powerful. All right. That is so cool. So, um, Tommy, last question here. And I yes. ask this to everybody that's been on the show. Um, if, uh, if you could go back in time, say 40 years and have your current self speak to your younger self, like 40 years or so ago, yeah. what words of wisdom would your, uh, would your current self tell your younger self? So here's, here's what I, I was, I, I had a voice inside of me. Um, how I'm living now is how I craved to live when I was like 10. Very simplified. Uh, I I was sort of an old soul. Uh, I like, I kind of knew what I wanted to, to sort of where I wanted to be, what I wanted to do. I had likes and I, I was, I'm shy. I was shy. And I know that people (laughs) can't believe that, but I, I express it every now and then now, but I was shy, quiet. I didn't come into myself. I always tried to please. I went through the motions to please everybody. I wanted to not get anybody to get upset at me. Still to this day, I don't like it. I don't like, you know, but I'm willing to what it, what I stand for. Um, I'd say to myself, uh, try to find that, that expression of say it. If you're thinking it, say, if you want to do it, do it. Um, I was very much, uh, after high school, go to college, go, you know, go to professional life, do this. And I played pro baseball. I would have gone back and never gone to college. Like, don't go to college. It was an absolute waste. And this coming from a person who has three degrees, I I would want none of those degrees. Go go spend that money on something else, but go travel, go work every job, connect with cultures worldwide and see how they live. And get, I mean, I would have grasped, I had so much wasted education. It's like half a million dollars in degrees. It's just such a joke. I, I mean, just save it. Save your parents. If I wanted to play baseball, just play in a, in a semi-pro league to get pro. Like, I didn't have to do any of that. Um, but I did what, was, what society expected you to do, you know? And you got parents and you, you got to. But if you express, if you honestly sit and express to the best, I would have spoken up more and been this version of myself now as early as I could be. Um, because I got to tell you, it feels fantastic. And I think that's what the people, like when people see it, they're like drawn to like, damn, man, he just doesn't, he just says, he just lives. And that, that's what I truly with, there was door to a new earth and swung open. That's what I see is human beings unapologetically living as human beings. And, and, human connected to human we're pretty amazing when we get down to it like like we truly are amazing we want to help we have service we want to connect we want to nourish we want to be out like it's almost like if everyone's like what do i do with my kid he needs to be in this program if you just set them outside and let kids be kids they'll just they'll just create this whole world with dragons and princesses and you know, a rock is a, is a weapon or a, a time portal. I mean, it is literally one of the purest expressions of humanity that I'm stuck at 12 years old with just some adult responsibilities. But if we can get back to that, I truly think we're, it, it will be an amazing, this amazing page of humanity that we've never seen before. And you'll be a part of that. And that's, that's pretty fun. I mean, it's, unreal if you think like you're going to be the foundation of this huge thing moving forward my god it's not going to be written in the history books but don't worry about it i love it i love it yeah i love it and i love you got you have a sword and you've got a video game thing in the background i mean i love i love everything about (laughs) you but um tom tommy um so for people that uh want to find more about you where can they go to learn more about you and your work yeah so i'm i'm uh, we started a nonprofit, as I said, uh, health freedom for humanity, or I think I said health freedom for humanity.org. Um, Alex Zek, Ali Zek, you can get all my personal stuff from there too, but I really want to put that organization up to the forefront. Um, 
we're doing a lot of good things. We're grassroots, uh, but we have education classes every sat- Sunday. We we're taking a poll to set up statewide branches, and we've got forty eight countries wanting to get involved. But it's just we're fighting for your health and medical freedom and the right to do what you wish to do with your body because it doesn't matter what political party it doesn't matter what what you know gender or or race or where you live or your income you're human and you're sovereign and you have every right to live that way and so we will do what's necessary we've all stated there's 25 of us just like seven core members with 25 of us total that we said this is a hill we'll die on this is bigger than all of us this is what we're taking, some have families and practices like licenses and they're giving, they're putting them at basically putting a big target on our backs, right? To, to kind of fight for what's being robbed and we're willing, we're okay with it because of how big it is. So I just want all the attention to go there. We got an awesome podcast, um, amazing guests, and it's going to get cool when we get, we get going and we, you know, we get some, some funding and, and the growing pains, I, like a nonprofit. I'm a part of a nonprofit. Profit. This is crazy. I don't even know what this is. You know, like you always hear about it. <laughs> that's awesome. So, that's yeah. awesome. All right, Tommy, thank you so much for your honesty, your huge heart, and uh, it was a pleasure connecting with you. Appreciate you, man. We'll have to do this again. Absolutely. I've, I've never met you before. I mean, I met I've met your uh, your good buddy Alex, um, but uh, and we become we become friends. But uh, I feel like I've always known you, and it's uh, it's just great to connect with you. Absolutely, man. All right, take care, Tommy. You too. All right, bye-bye. Thank you for listening to The Drew Perlman Show. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. In the words of Mark Twain, 20 years from now, you will be more disappointed by the things you didn't do than the things you did do. So throw off the bow lines, sail away from the safe harbor, and catch the trade winds in your sails. Explore, dream, discover, and stay well, everyone.